Hello, Melissa. The lady said recording in progress. So here we are. Here we are. It means we're official, I guess. I guess so. Um, so for those of you who are just tuning in, I am Megan Holmes coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, here at my needlepoint shop, the Needlepoint Clubhouse. And my friend over here uh, is, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Melissa McLeod here at the Wool and the Floss in Gross Point, Michigan, just outside of Detroit. And so the first time we've been together since the retreat, right? That's exactly right. Been together uh, virtually, I guess you will say. So Melissa and I have, as you just said, been together virtually doing this podcast since um, kind of mid-pandemic. So 2020. 20 May of 2020, I think. -ish. And um, so here we are, you're finding us on YouTube. And um, we like to talk about all things Needlepoint. We've done a lot of interviewing of designers. We've done a lot of discussion around um, types of stitches in the Needlepoint industry. And so today we're here to talk about a product, actually, um, or I guess a, a section of products, if you will. So we're going to talk about ribbons, right? All things ribbon. We are. We are. And I'm just making a quick note because I suddenly remembered you and I talked about something. So at some point during this, we'll do a quick um, pause because we talked about some of our favorite um, ribbon-esque tools and I forgot to pull those. Okay. The list. So we'll do a little pause and we'll come back, but that's okay. okay. Um, I love doing ribbon work. Um, Megan also has learned to love ribbon work when she and I first got to be stitching besties I think she was a little intimidated by ribbon work um and I think it looks intimidating but I think you can attest to the fact that it looks intimidating but it's really 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 easy and it makes you look like a stitching star it really does it really um, does it's so easy so and I think something that you said to me very early on was the ribbon does the work for itself like you have to do very little and the ribbon will shine yeah. And I think yeah. you're right. I've learned that. <laughs> sure. For sure. It, it looks scary, but it really isn't. Um, and I guess let's back up just one little bit. We have had a number of episodes about different kinds of thread types and Meg and I were talking recently and I'm like, you know what? I don't think we've ever talked about ribbon. So we're not here to do like ribbon demonstrations or any of that. It's a really hard, this is a hard platform to do that type of thing on, but um, we just want to kind of drill it down to some basic ribbon knowledge. As Megan and I both always say, we are not experts on anything. We know a lot about a lot of things and sometimes not much of anything at all. So um, <laughs> we're just gonna share with you the knowledge that we have learned in our years of stitching and shop ownership, et cetera. Um, but by all means, there's lots of other, um, there's a lot of people who know a lot, 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 lot more about ribbon work than either Megan or I do, or probably Megan and I put together. So That's very fair. But the one thing I will say, and I, I think we're going to talk starting up sort of at the top about what types of ribbons, yes. um, but wouldn't you say that in general and needlepoint, we're almost always talking about silk ribbon? Correct. So I think the term ribbon gets used in our world a little bit between ribbon shaped threads, meaning, um, meaning, meaning neon rays, neon rays plus yeah, that they're like flat and long, you know, like this is a ribbon, it's flat and long, but there could be a lot of ribbon shaped threads that aren't silk ribbon. And we're here really talking about silk ribbon, right? Right. Exactly. So, um, I know the first time I was introduced to to uh, silk ribbon, and sorry, I have all this stuff in front of me, but not very well organized. And I just dropped something on the floor. Um, I was first introduced to river silks. And uh, the gal who runs river silks, I remember being in a class at TNNA, that's how long ago it was. And somebody saying, my old shop owner didn't carry ribbons. And I'm like, this is something we need to do. Like, they're so fabulous. There's so many fun things you can do with this. And someone said, you have, and I hope Jean watches us. I don't know if she does. Um, her name is Jean Krenicki. I hopefully I'm saying that right. Um, she is the distributor of River Silks. They do come from China. I can't tell you anything else about like the origins of the threads. Um, but they said, I swear you place your order and Jean's calling you to make sure that you got your order and everything was okay before you even hit send. Like she's just a fantastic uh, logistical provider of a fantastic product. Um, so I think it's probably fair to say River Silks is like one of the basics in the industry. 
Um, and because of that conversation at market, and I think it was actually in a class with Susie Valray, and it wasn't Susie saying it, but she was doing some sort of project class and the conversation came up. So um, River Silks has gobs and gobs and gobs of colors. I'm trying to pick up my visual and also aid. and also multiple sizes. So if I if memory serves, you can order size four, size right. seven, size eleven, and I think thirteen. It does it go up as high as thirteen? I know about thirteen. I've never heard of eleven. You could be right. I Maybe only know. Wrong. I might be I wrong. Know with that. Four, seven, and thirteen millimeter. Okay. And not all the colors come in all the sizes. But she sends a ring. So this, for instance, is the, and I know you have this as well, the 13 millimeter ring. And the beauty of Jean sending us this ring is if I get down to this, the, there's, there's tons of colors because this is only half of the four millimeter, which I would say is the most common. Um, so there's gobs and gobs of colors. Most shops, I shouldn't say that, my shop doesn't have room to carry all the colors. No, um, and neither do I. So we carry in River Silks. I also find River Silks to be kind of the workhorse of the ribbon because it's very pure colors. So um, we carry like Christmas red, Christmas green, blue and white in the four millimeter of the River Silks. And then after that, we have the rings. And because to your point, she is such a great, does such a great job of fulfillment of orders that we do almost all special orders with River Silks um, because you, to your point, you can you can order it and you get it very, very quickly. So and and it would be crazy to try to stock it all because there is so much of it. And I think the other thing I observe about it is that it's true colors, but then there's also some really beautiful over dyes. And I, I brought a couple of those. So we carry probably about we carry both uh, consistent colors from the four millimeter to the seven millimeter. So we have about 30, four millimeters, 37 millimeters. So there's some very solid colors, like here's white, solid as can be. Here's black, you'll notice that the this card is black because this is a seven millimeter card. This is a four millimeter card. They're very, very well labeled. Um, I will also tell you that there can be fairly dramatic dye lot issues with these, not necessarily with white and black, but with other colors. Um, but I've also had it happen where I've ordered for a project-based class. Jean sent me a yellow and it comes in like almost cream colored. And when she calls, I, I kid you not, her customer service is outstanding. She'll call and say, did your order come in okay? And I'll say, oh, it did. But you know, this one color changed a lot. Well, you send it back. I'm going to fix that for you. So I don't know how she, it's like she's a magic fairy. Like she just pull th pulls things out of a hat. So these are the solid colors in the two different sizes. And then um, I don't know if they have any strongly variegated ones, but these are like kind of dotted. Like we love to sell this for like a mummy because it has like, it's white. With so it's little, right? I'm glad you brought that up because in my naivete around ribbons, I mean, I know, it, like I said, enough to be dangerous, but that's literally about it. Um, we carry, and I don't want to jump ahead too much, but in order for um, point of uh, reference here, we carry dinky dyes and see, this is what I would call as a heavily over dyed. And I grabbed that on purpose because um, we love these for when either you have very little ribbon work to do on a piece and you want two different colors. So let's say you were going to do hydrangea and you want some like a couple pink hydrangea and a couple blue and then a couple other blue. But if you want it to be consistent yet over dyed, I like those river silks, the ones that you were showing that are a little more speckly i don't know what else to call that yeah. almost yeah yeah so i don't think river silks and i'm just glancing at my color things i think their things are always solid or like speckled slash tonal um that they, they don't have any wildly variegated colors i think that i think i can say that that's a fact and i, I was like Dinky dyes has both, so i don't know how this is going to resonate but do you see that you can see kind of right. the over dye in it um, and I would say, on in my opinion, Dinky Dyes isn't a leader in a very consistent solid color. I really prefer River Silks to a very, like, if you want an orange ribbon, then you need the orange color from the, you know what I'm saying? And so there's good and there's pluses and minuses to all of them. And to your point, since we can't carry every color and every size and every product line, we sort of, we decided to do the whole line of the dinky dyes in two sizes and then, because it's a little bit more of a manageable line. 
right. then have the rings for the river silks. But there's one, um, I'm sorry, I might be jumping ahead, but there's one um, product line that we're not mentioning. And I don't know if that's up next. So I've got, so the, uh, so you carry the full line of the dinky dyes. I do not carry the full line of Trinway silks, but we have a good number. That's what I was about to say. Like 10 rows times eight, I think. So about 80 colors. So we brought in a trunk show, which was our way of being able to figure out what colors work best for us. Mm -hmm. And so they had probably twice as many colors. And to your point, they, Trinway is very similar, I think, to Dinky Dyes. This is more of a tonal. I love this color. This is called Ocean. Of course, mm -hmm. I love it. Um, and then, you know, in all sorts of colorways. So here's one of the red ones, Rhododendron. Uh, but then they have a lot like this that are, uh -huh. there's green, there's yellow, there's yep. like light gray, periwinkle, all sorts of colors in there. So, and this I like is, to put it apart in little sections, those. Right, right. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think this is really great if you just need a little bit here and there, or it's also really great if you're trying to make a, a larger floral piece um, and not have to switch colors constantly. So, um, so I have a quick question that I don't know if it's on your list or not. I'm sorry, I'm talking over, you didn't mean to. Um, how about amounts? So I'm looking at the... Um, the four millimeter, okay, four millimeter dinky dies ribbon has four meters. The seven millimeter dinky dies ribbon has two meters. Is that consistent with River Silks and Trainway? I've never really compared those, I'll be honest. And I, we carry, so um, Trainway is 3.5 millimeter. And then I believe they also have seven millimeter and a wider one. I apologize that I don't know offhand. So, cause we can order those, but so they're 3.5, which is basically the same as four has five yards. If you look on river silks, I never thought about that. I wonder if they're the same or not. These are both 5.5 yards or five meters, whether it's four millimeters or seven. Millimeters. So these are a little more consistent. And the tricky thing, and I, I almost wish you hadn't brought up amounts because this is like an, like shop owner's nightmare. It is so hard to judge <laughs> how much ribbon yeah. you will need. And it really depends on the way you'll be using it. And this, the, you know, if you get into some really detailed ribbon work, what type, like a spider, a woven spider web rose takes up gobs of ribbon, but doing like a Japanese ribbon stitch doesn't take up that much. So um, if a shop is kidding something with ribbon for you, try to give them an idea of what you'll be doing with it. Um, if we kit something for you, it'll probably be in our heads, like what we were thinking. And we might make some little notes, like we're assuming you will do this kind of work with this ribbon. And that's why we sold you this amount. Um, they are, I believe everything we've talked about is hand dyed. So there will be dye lot differences. Um, the good news is many, many times with ribbon work, you're doing something that exists in mother nature's world which is always, you know, mother nature. Every flower is a different color. Every branch is a different shade of brown. You know? So yeah, you roll I, a little bit. I don't think I can ever, again, you've had a little more experience with ribbon than I, a lot more experience with ribbon than I have, but I can't think of a reason why you would ever like, like need enough ribbon to essentially like basket weave a background, which is like, you would, you'd have like an obvious cut in dye lot. I, you know, I can't, I can't think of a way, but I'm sure that somebody might. There's, so I just probably some way, but we don't, we don't know what it is. <laughs> um, I want to mention one other thing about Trainway ribbon. Again, I carry the 3.5 millimeter. They make a, at least one, if not two other sizes. They do make solids. I don't carry the solids. I'd already had river silks in the shop. Um, I'm a very loyal person. I think people have figured that out about me and I do make, decisions based on business, but I, I was like, well, I love Trinway's over dyed colors, but there's no reason to stop having river silks. So um, they do make solid colors. I just don't carry them. The one thing that they do do in some of these colors, did I pull one? I don't know if I pulled one. Let's see if I got lucky. Nope, I didn't. So they have, most of their colors are called Montano, um, which I think this is backwards. So I don't know why I'm showing you, but um, they also have colors called, um, Hold on. I just had it in my brain and now I lost it. Is it the 36 roses? Is that the, what you're getting? Five roses. Thank you. You got me there. 65, what is it? What's the name? 65 roses because it, um, there's a very close, uh, 
person to the owner who worked there and I'm as her name is escaping me and her children I believe believe had cystic fibrosis so 10% of the proceeds of that ribbon sale go to support uh, research in for cystic fibrosis. So we do have many of those colors. I didn't just didn't happen to pull one of those off the wall. And I just remembered the, how the 60, because when you say 65 roses, it sounds like cystic fibrosis. Got it. Okay. Right. So yeah, we're, we're stumbling along here because uh, yeah, we just are. But I started out hearing all the 65 roses colors. And then that's when I thought, why don't I have more of these? These are so beautiful. So I still have the 65 roses colors and then I have a lot more. So um, I just wanted to give her a little shout out for that. Um, there are, two, there's one other fairly um, active seller in the needlepoint world of, uh, silk ribbons, which is Gloriana. And we love, love, love Gloriana's threads. Um, I happen to not carry it just, just cause you can't have everything. Um, I think it's a little less forgiving in terms of if you make a mistake with river silks, you can literally like pull it out and yeah. reuse it, which yep. seems kind of crazy. Um, I have this gorgeous color of Gloriana, um, silk for my stash and I love their silks they tend to run a little bit more you have to be just they're a little more fragile they're very dainty very beautiful but that makes them yeah, just a little bit more fragile so um if you're going to dive into river work rivers ugh, silk ribbon for the first time I might suggest using river silks because it really is the hardiest I think so the most I yeah I agree with that I agree with that. And also when I started, I wish I had my piece. I couldn't find it in the shop here. I think you've seen it before. It's the Ann Fisher B and there's like, it's oh, like, yeah. got like viney stuff. And so I used ribbon on that and it was just two basic colors that I used. One was a hot pink that I used to French knot. And the other was a green that I just kind of, kind of twisted and flipped and laid. And Melissa talked me through like, don't worry so much about it. Um, and I think, and that was river silks and they were just those solid colors. I didn't have to mess too much with the overdive. Right. And I have in my stash, just in case people have, you know, been around for a while, they might have it in their stash. Um, if you can believe it, Rainbow Gallery used to make Splendor Ribbon. Um, and I actually thought this was really great. The only problem with it, and it's only really a temporary problem, is just like a lot of the other um, Rainbow Gallery things, it comes off the card in a crease. So this is a place where definitely, um, and I actually, I've used it also on Gloriana. Gloriana tends to come off a little bumpy, I guess. So I pull out my little ceramic flat iron and just give it a quick run through. Um, these are silk threads, stating yeah. the obvious. If, I you, the same. if you use the, the ceramic to, like you don't move it quickly enough, you can kind of fry the ribbon. It, it won't light on fire or anything, but it, it will take out some of the beauty and the color and the shine of it. So. I find the same with the knot here. Yeah. And, and I think that's why Gloriana's is, is skein the same way Dinky Dyes is. Yeah. Um, Treenway like loops it. Can you see how that's like looped around the card? Uh -huh. yeah, this is too. yeah. Whereas Gloriana's is, I guess it's just a tighter loop or something, but a little ceramic flat iron will take care of that. Um, The other ribbon that I was introduced to right when I first started owning, uh, when I first owned the shop was, um, planet earth had a ribbon for a while. And I have to, I shouldn't even show these. I should like, he should like auction them to the highest bidder. Tracy, if you are watching us, we would love you to bring these back. These are just two, two samples in my stash. So oh, they were like tipped on the edge. At, yes. Yes. I mean, look at this one. And I, I have a sample of this one in use. Oh my gosh. I mean, this is, I think it's must be a, oh, this is 10 millimeters. Interesting. No, that's, I'm lying. 10 meters, probably. It's 10 millimeters, five yards. So this is a it 10. I know. And then this one, I think is probably four. No, this is a seven millimeter, but this is like speckled. I mean, they were just so, so, so beautiful. And I, when do you think they stopped making them? Like seven years ago, maybe? Something um, like I think it was a little later than that because I'll we'll have on the shop six in um, September and I had it right after that. So probably five to six years ago. Yeah. Just makes me want to cry. They're so beautiful. They so, were really pretty. We did a trunk show with them right after I owned the shop and it was awesome. But I would have kept like one of each. A lot of it has to do with the ability for these distributors to get their base product and to manage the um, 
fulfillment process. And so you don't blame them when they, you know, cancel out a particular product just because they, they want to be able to fulfill it consistently, particularly if someone uses it in a, sp a specific like class or something. And then if it's, if it's an inconsistent product, then it's tough. So. But they, they were really, really beautiful. So I am sure that there's other really gorgeous silk ribbons out there that Megan and I don't have familiarity with, but those are the ones that kind of are near and dear to yeah, our heart. If anybody has any more information on different lines, drop them and drop that in the comments. We do read those comments at the, on the YouTube, um, here on YouTube and the comments below the episode. So yeah, let us know if we're missing something for sure. Yeah. The other question that I get quite a bit is, um, can you recommend some really good ribbon books? And Megan and I both carry this book in our shops, although we're both saying we, we're down to like brass tacks in these, meaning we only have a couple copies each. Um, and this is a fantastic book. It was brought to my attention and either along with Megan or then Megan's attention, one of the two. Anyways, um, by Kelly Clark, who we're both big fangirls of. I know she's coming to teach at your shop in a few yeah, weeks. And you should go. I'm so jealous. Um, so I think, you know what? I think it's the same weekend I'm doing an online class with Laura Taylor. Ah, nice. I know, I know. It's not quite the same, but it's a little more user-friendly right now for me with, I've got, you know, kids just came home from college and graduating and blah, blah, blah. Anyways, we digress. So this, I love this book. Um, there are all sorts of great projects in the back. So this whole section that has yellow toppers, honestly, guess what? I've never even used or read, but there's some fabulous, fabulous, fabulous product uh, projects in here. And it shows you how the, like, the um, ribbons are built. There's three different stitches that have gone into this dandel or dandelion, excuse me, daffodil. Mm -hmm. uh, but the beauty of this book is in the front and I'm gonna try to find an, a straightforward page um i should have marked this i apologize i'm trying to find just the japanese ribbons right i think what you're trying to show is that the diagrams are so fabulous in this book they are like step by step so here's your your ribbon rows you don't even have to read if you don't want you can just follow along and figure it out so really? yeah i mean i honestly anyone can learn how to do ribbon work from this book. It's I just agree. Melissa gifted this, that book to me when I had COVID a That's million. Right. I forgot that. that. <laughs> one other one, which I don't know if I've ever tried to get, but it's also a fabulous book, but frankly, both of them sort of have similar diagrams in them. Um, so we've decided just like you, that this is the best book to carry for ribbon work, but it is a little difficult to get. And we are, I think we are down to maybe zero. Um, but we had, do you have in your website where it's like, remind me when you get this back in stock or whatever? So if, if you go to our um, site or they're gone, hit the button and you'll get a reminder when it comes back. Um, and they're only $19.95. Yeah, they're a very good price too. Yeah. Which is crazy for a full color book. So um, we love that book and we love Kelly Clark for letting us know about it. Um, yeah, it's it's really, really great. So, um, but that book kind of covers more, I probably should have brought that up at the end. It covers more traditional ribbon work, which has been used in embroidery for years and kind of adapted to needlepoint in the last couple decades, I, I would say. Um, but when I was thinking about like, what do I do with ribbon? Because people always look at the, they say, this is so beautiful, but I don't know what to do with it if I'm not making flowers. Well, there's so many things you can do with it. So I have, I know you've got some samples there. Um, I do. And I'm just sitting here thinking, I want to have the original version. Oh, hold on. One of my campuses. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So this, speaking of Kelly Clark, is um, her canvas. And I did a long-term project class with this a year ago or a few years ago. And if you look at the E, hopefully you guys can see that. This is a scotch stitch in ribbon work. So that oh, is wow. a okay. four, uh, four millimeter river silk. And I just did a scotch stitch. I think it goes one up to an over five. Um, and yeah, so you can literally just stitch with silk ribbon. Um, Megan and I have both talked about the fact like you would never do a background in silk ribbon. Oh. Um, I shouldn't say that in a basket weave. You could it could be part of a composite stitch. Your four millimeters, as you can see from this, it's it kind of gathers up on itself, which makes it really pretty. But you wouldn't want it everywhere. So. Um, yeah, you can just stitch with it. So that's uh, the very first thing you can do with silk ribbon. <laughs> right. Uh, and I wish I had my sample. Do you have a sample of a French knot in ribbon there? I do. As a matter of fact, I was laughing because you were looking for a canvas in the sample that I have. Where did I, I buried everything. 
it's right here. And here's my ribbon. So mm -hmm. this was, I think I saw it in your bin. So this was part of Stitch Styles Patriotic Club that Ginny and I did together. Um, and I'm much behind most of my customers in stitching mine. So I got to this and Ginny had a really um, interesting combination of threads to use up there. Okay. Um, for hydrangea, but I was like, I, I just want to do ribbon work with mine. So Treenway Silks has this gorgeous color. It's Ooh, called Glacier yeah. Lake, but I feel like it should be called hydrangea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just did French knots. And as you can probably see, um, to my Megan's point earlier, I just let the ribbon do the work for me. So this is slightly uh, tonal and variegated. And I just jumped around and filled in the space with French knots. There's no rhyme or reason to it. And all those pooling of colors was based on how the um, ribbon was dyed. So um, Ginny, yep. like this is the only thing I think I changed on this from Ginny. Um, but yeah, so I changed those over to French knots. So the, what I did, I think, if I recall, is I did a French knot, a double wrap French knot because it was a little rosebud. And so, but it was so easy and it just sat by itself. So it was like a double and then you went to the next spot and double front. And I do not know where my sample is driving me crazy. Um, but in that case, it was just simply to your point, like you stitched it, right? And then I did the same thing, uh, similar thing on the vining. I kind of came up and I sort of twisted it and came back down and sort of just didn't pull it taut all the way through. I just sort of let it kind of lay there and then went up and then back down again and sort of let it do its thing. Like it wasn't, it's not like, you know, Japanese ribbon stitch or spider ribbon stitch or whatever. It was just stitching. You played, you played, <laughs> you figured it out. So yeah. it's more free form, which is exactly free form. Yeah. That's a great way to say it for sure. Um, the other thing that I've done with um, ribbon a lot is I don't know if you can see the holly berries on here and how uh -huh. dimensional they are. And so um, this is a technique I uh, suggest, there we go, a lot. Um, and we sell in the shop these little wooden pony beads. Okay. And all you do with these, um, and I'm trying to think, oh, I, I don't have that right here. Oh, maybe Becky can hand it to me. It's in that other book, right? Is that what you were going to say? Um, that little fawn and cardinal guy behind you. So I um, like to wrap these with ribbon. And I think actually Julia Snyder taught me how to do that. And I ended up doing it on the little fawn and cardinal for those berries as well. But yep. basically you just take your ribbon, you thread it up at, on a smaller needle than usual because you have to get your needle through the little hole in the bead along with the ribbon. And you go through, you leave yourself a tail and you just wrap, 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 and you go all the way around. And I will tell you from experience, um, make sure you wrap it more than you need because it will shift on itself and you don't want your bead to end up showing. So you go through the hole and around and then through the hole again and around and through the, so I think, that's in the other, I think that's in that um, stump, I think stump, work stump work, the A to Z stump work. Yeah. So um, Julia Snyder is the one who first taught me how to do it. And I did it on here. Um, and then when I got it done, I ended up realizing that I hadn't wrapped some of them well enough. As a matter of fact, here's one that I haven't. And I doubt you can see that from there, but there's a little bit of bead showing there. So point being, use use as much, go through it as many times as you can. And it's going to get to the point where you're going to probably have to use, and you're, you're going to like this, Megan, you have to use those little tiny pliers, which I think you have right by you, because your needle will get stuck in the bead so that's when you know you're done like you literally want to go through it as many and times you're like as pulling your needle out of the little hole so the reason i brought these pliers was not for that reason and but i don't it worked out well didn't it that <laughs> yeah, but it worked out well didn't it <laughs> so i'm actually doing um i don't know if you're ready to move on to actual needle excuse me actual ribbon stitches but i'm actually sure. doing the um japanese ribbon stitch on that i don't know if you can see that and, and I think we have to back up about that project. Wasn't that the project that you were missing the background thread on that you've been like looking for for months? And it was sitting next to you when we filmed a podcast. Yeah, that was bizarre. Um, I have gone back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and back and forth on this project. It is all done except for the white lily of the valley. And I really didn't want to do ribbons because I wanted it to just be a durable pillow because we use my the pillows at my house. But the more I looked at it and the more I looked at it, it really does need ribbon work. So I'm doing it now. Hmm? 
It looks gorgeous. Yeah, it's turning out pretty good. It's it it really does look like Lily of the Valley when you do that. And you know the little because the Lily of the Valley have their little like cups that come over. But my point is, so I needed to use seven millimeter. I think that yeah. you did. I think yeah. this is seven millimeter. Um, but and it's even though it's on thirteen count mesh, so it should slide through pretty well. But I'm also doing it over top of stitch some stitching because oh. I don't want. Like, I don't, how do I say this? I don't want my empty, I don't think I'm going to go in and fill all the white in, but I don't want them to show. So I'm just kind of coming up sort of right on the edge of the blue there. And it's, I also am very weak in my, in my trigger here and it just hurts. And so I kind of get it started. And then I pull this little, these are the best things. And I think they're like four bucks. Or something. It's like insane how inexpensive these things are, but it pulls it right out. And we have some, um, stitchers who use this all the time to pull things out I only do it when it's like something that's just really hard for me to grip to get through right. um but one thing you haven't mentioned yet and I don't know if this is on your list I might be jumping ahead um is what needles you use because I was going to explain what needle I was using here and why it, you know is yeah. that good I'm gonna tools at the end but we can do it as we go that's totally cool well, so, so in, in addition to, so when I pull this canvas back out, first of all, I didn't have it on stretcher bars because I had been scooping the background and I decided I wanted it on bars. So of course I had to take my crazy rolled up piece and shove it on stretcher bars. Cause there was no way I was going to try to do a ribbon stitch like in hand. Cause I'm just not quite that savage. <laughs> um, it's the word savage. I have to tell you later we, I had a conversation with somebody at the pointing it out podcast about being savage on needlepoint canvas but anyway <laughs> the things um, happen at retreats oh my god um but anyway so I am never quite sure honestly if I should use a 24 or a 22 but I always use chenille needles on these wider ribbons like the sevens I usually use a 22 because I just prefer a little bit of a larger eye to thread it with. But again, remember how we're not, this is all like trial and error for myself. So I'm laughing because people ask me all the time, like, do you use a special needle for ribbon work? I'm like, no, I learned that you're really supposed to use a chenille needle. But I never do because those are in a different bag and I don't know where they are. And I use a tapestry needle, it works out just fine. Well, I'm going to give you one of these. Better. I'm going to give you one of these because I think the reason why you, you might get some running. I don't. And any ribbon, except for the one that I mentioned earlier that I won't mention again, because I feel bad that I said that. it. But runs. It, if you use a chenille needle, it won't because it just pierces it right through. But yeah. you've done way more ribbon work than I have. So I'm not going to wag well, the finger too badly. But I think that's the point of the chenille needle is it's really sharp. And so right. it pierces it and you go right through. Um, and so, but I try to use a 22 when I can just because I'm lazy and I don't use needle threaders and the eye of a 22 is bigger than a 24. Um, I think in theory, if, if I were being a really good needlepoint student, I would use a 24 on four millimeter because it, again, it, it would just make a smaller hole. Um, yes, but. except for the other, the other reason to use a bigger needle is Keep in mind the eye of the needle helps to open up that canvas right. hole, so right. it doesn't do wear and tear on the side of your ribbon. So it's one of those like, mm, you know, which one's better? I don't know. You and know, then you we were really like good students. Of needle. Huh? I said, and then you could be like me and just grab whatever needle you can well, find. If we were really good students of needlepoint, if we were like Kelly Clark, we'd probably use an awl or some sort of another tool to open up the hole of the of the yeah, um maybe. and. It took me a long time for that word, A W L, all. <laughs> yeah. Because I'm not from the South, y'all. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, so I, I, I hear your words and I, I just don't know enough about to know, like, what's the priority? Opening up the needlepoint canvas or I don't know, I don't know, not, not shredding your ribbon or, you know, for Japanese ribbon stitch, I don't want a huge hole in, you know, I want it to be a small hole. So I don't, you know, I don't, anyway. Again, not you know, as, <laughs> as you and I have always said, like try try it, audition your stitch, see if it works. If it looks great, then it's right. You know, there's there's no needle point police. No one's gonna come and hunt you down for not using the right size needle and the right size ribbon and the right size canvas. Indeed. But I also think um, you know, just to be thoughtful about why we disseminate a lot of this information is because if you're frustrated with what you're doing, like if you're saying, oh, this keeps happening. 
well then try some of those other things. Use a larger needle, use an awl to open up the thing, try a different size needle, try a, a chenille needle instead of a tapestry needle. Those are just, depending on how you stitch and what situation you're in, these are all just options, <coughs> excuse me, to try to make your stitching more fun. We forgot one one very easy but important use of ribbon. Oh, I hadn't forgotten. I have it right here. I'm excited. Oh, okay. So, well, because I have my one that has more extravagant stitching like your flowers are. But um, the only place I think I used ribbon on this canvas, nope, I did French knots down here. But more importantly, um, all these little bows on the greenery and the wreaths are little bows in uh, river silks in the four millimeter and we are not going to demonstrate this at all now but google how to tie a bow with a fork and that's how you're going to get these little tiny bows so a couple things i wanted to ask you about that because again you've done little tiny bows way more frequently than i have but i did a little tiny bow on this piece cute. so and I think what's fun about these two examples, um, because I'm a nerd, so this is like super fun. <laughs> so did Joanna have bows painted on? And let's see. Did you stitch over top? I stitched over the top of them because I can't remember. They were, they were placed somewhere slightly differently on the canvas than I think I ended up putting them so yeah so I stitched over them and then tied the bows and then tacked the bows on through the knot of the bow and I usually use a beading needle and beading thread or floss like whatever's easier to get your hands on but um I probably could use a chenille needle but whenever I need to use something sharp I just grab a beading needle because well, a beading needle is great too it's even thinner but yeah. it would be very hard to um red ribbon on a beading needle that would not gonna work that's not gonna work but floss yeah. or um beading thread works to but so yours were painted probably in the spot they are this was painted very similar and I was digging through my bin because I really wanted to show you the way this was so this is a Nan Fisher piece and the way she painted it is it just kind of gave it looked like the little apron ends were just kind of there <clears throat> sorry I'm gonna have to get a drink <clears throat> got well, why, don't, why don't you pause us and I can go grab that canvas because I don't okay. want to. Okay, that'd be great. Let me just say one thing though. So I added a bow. So there was never actually a bow here. I just I, made the bow and then let the, and then, but I tacked down the. The tails. Tails. And the reason I did it on this is because it was heavier over here on this side of the canvas because this came out further and this was kind of boring. So I decided to layer this right. out, just kind of flared out a little bit and tack it down. Whereas your, I think your tails are kind of flying out, right? They're, they're hopping around wherever they want to be. I only tacked it down in the very center. Gotcha. Yeah. And so that's the difference between the two bows. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to give us a pause so you can get that canvas and get your tool. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. So we're back again and we've got, so I think you did such a great job with this because you can almost barely see where that ribbon was. And um, so just you adding that dimensionality to the canvas, I think really gives it a lot. Well, so. I appreciate that. But the big, my biggest thing was that I guess I'm pretty OCD and I knew I needed a background. I wanted it to be pink cause it's Mrs. Claus. And then I didn't really want to do it shaped. I wanted it to be a little bit of an easier shape. So I, but I wanted it to be even from the center, like out, but like I said, so this kind of kicks out over here. So I needed to have an even amount of space. So I just created a little something over there, but, um, I just had so much fun with that. It was so easy. It was so easy. Really cute. I think Good I job. used like a strand of splendor. To, and if you look really close. So for a while, I got really hard on myself because if you look really close, you can see my tacking stitches. Yeah. But there's really no way around that, is there? No. And Ribbon I box? tell people with um, anything that they're stitching, like give it the five foot test. Like when we're stitching, we're like this. Nobody looks at, at other people stitching that closely. We only look at our own that closely. So if, if you give it a normal like arm's length, which is how most people are going to be looking at our stitching, um, I'm sure you can't see those stitches at all. So it's true. It's yeah. True. So, yeah. So I talked about that. I use um, beading thread again, many times because it's close and easy, um, but any pliable something, splendor, swa anchor floss, you know, any, anything that's little and skinny is going to work for tacking those down. Right. Um, I have, so 
my other example, and I can't remember if we've talked about this. We probably have. So I feel bad that we bring back the same samples, but you know, there's only so many hours in a day, right? Right. Exactly. What I like about this pillow, um, besides Melissa Prince's fabulous designs, and of course, you guys know I'm a dog person through and through. Um, I use this as a way, each of these canvases are four inch coasters, and I was using it as a way to teach a lot of ribbon work. So I've got stitch guides for all of these. So each of the dogs has a different type of flower on their heads. And with the exception of the golden doodle in the middle that has um, woven spider web ribbon flowers, I think I said that in the right order, and some looped daisy stitches with some French knots. I think that's a little bit of Japanese ribbon stitch. Um, I had done all these stitches before. I had never, and I guess that's that's Japanese ribbon, just like you're doing on your lilies, but just in a circle. Um, but these were a different type of ro woven rose. This, I think she called uh, the begonia. It's like creating begonias, I think. Oh yeah, it's almost like it's gathered. Yeah. And these are, this is really cool. Cause are this those is the looped ones that all kind of come together. This one is, I think, I can't remember more if that's seven millimeter or 13 millimeter, but you do a running stitch along the inside edge or the bottom edge of the ribbon okay. and you, you pull it together and it, it gather okay. up on itself and creates that. But my point is that a, there's all these different flowers, which was really fun. But the majority of them I had never done before. I picked up that A to Z of ribbon work and I'm like, oh, I think I'll try that. I didn't try it on the side of the canvas. I just did it and it worked. So, yeah. and you can also, um, what I think is neat about the ribbon flowers is that you can, a couple things. So you can layer it on top of each other if you need to, yeah. yes. to hide the stitching below. Or you can sometimes do an extra stitch outside or just kind of pull your ribbon just a little bit with your needle to fluff it so that it covers up. So in other words, I have kind of an idea <clears throat> of how big things are going to turn out when I'm done manipulating them. Right. But you can always um, adjust it a little bit because the, like I said earlier, and you mentioned is the ribbon kind of works for you. Yes. Let it do uh, work for you. The one I, um, I love a good laying tool. I will be honest, I don't use it religiously. Like our friend Deb, like she's like, what do you mean you don't have a ribbon? Uh, you don't have a laying tool with you. And I'm like, well, you know, I just wasn't going to do anything all that fussy. She looks at me like I'm from Mars. Yeah. Um, but when I do ribbon work, I do like a good laying tool. And what you're going to want to look for in a laying tool is, I'm going to put this right in front of my face so you can see it. You see how this is pretty pointy, but it's not sharp. So it's not going to damage your ribbon but it's nice and smooth. So this um, allows you with the Japanese ribbon stitch to make a consistent bottom Ooh. loop, if you yep. want to call it that way. You can keep it there when you pull through to start to make your next stitch, because otherwise you can sometimes lose that final loop if you pull too hard. So um, ribbon work is the one time that I pretty much religiously use. A so tool. we usually carry them and I don't know, we don't, we didn't have one when I just went over to look and I don't know if that's because they don't carry them anymore or we're just out of them. But I actually really did like the um, Rainbow Gallery had a ribbon laying tool and it's almost like a tiny little metal pipe is the wrong word, but like a, like a cylindrical tubing piece that would lay. And I, I liked that because it was dull at the end, but it, it you could like I don't know, kind of like run your, I only played with it a couple times because I'm with you. I just use a regular laying tool, but I do not use a BLT when I'm doing ribbon work because I will just stab the crap. Out of <laughs> it's really just because I'm klutzy, but you know, those are so tight or excuse me, so pointy. Um, right. A ribbon, uh, excuse me, a wooden laying tool works nicely. I agree. Yes. Um, and the only other sample I have is more for posterity's sake, since I'm crying over the loss of um, something that we hasn't been around <laughs> about a decade but my sunflowers on here yeah you know, those they're so pretty they were so easy to do and they look so pretty because they're using that planet earth um ribbon that we talked about earlier that had the colored edges so, so if Tracy's not going to bring back her colored edges maybe another ribbon supplier will bring us colored edges you never know <laughs> don't know um 
Yes, I don't know. I, I tried to gather some other samples I had. Oh, and one thing I wanted to go back to, because I was thinking about it that you said, is the um ribbon on a fork. So yeah. Diane did a demo for us once, but the way she does it, she gets double loops. She ends with double loops. It looked like you just had one loop. So there must be two different ways to do that or different. You can just keep adding on to it. Uh, what I found out so cool, and I have not been brave enough to try it. It's so easy. Um, like literally if you Google tie a, tie a bow with a fork, you'll get like 50,000 YouTube, whatever, and it'll be fine. The one key thing is you want, in my opinion, the reason you're tying it with a fork is because you're, it's, you want it small enough that your fingers literally can't make it happen. Right. So therefore you want a fork where the prongs are fairly close together. Oh, right. And also easier if it is a four, a four spoked fork. Sometimes when you get to little forks, they turn into three spokes and then it's so hard to make your, your bow balance. <laughs> okay. They're making fun of me over there. I'm not sure oh, why. You're right. you're right. Everything you're saying is absolutely right. I, it's just, you're, it's, it does sound kind of funny, but yes. Yeah. Um, but so, so, so do you have any other tools there that you suggest? Um, I kind of, well, we've already talked about chenille needles. Yes. You probably should have them, should use them. I do use them some of the time. I'm just not religious about it. Um, laying tool I use quite a bit. Uh, the only other thing I guess I'd throw in here, which isn't a tool, but, um, I am not a believer of leaving knots in the back of my canvas, except when I stitch with ribbon, I yeah. very often leave a knot in the back of my canvas. Um, I feel like if you run your ribbon through the canvas without a knot on it, it's, it's so slippery and slidey. It's just going to come through. So I tend to knot my, um, ribbon and either just come up right where I'm stitching. Cause that knot's going to be really big. It's not going to come through your canvas or sometimes I run it through like, you know, a half an inch of stitches and leave that knot on the back. So it is one of the few times that I leave knots on the back of my canvas. That's a good, I'm glad you mentioned that because I think I probably have a case in point here. Yeah. I've got tiny little knots that are just kind of like stuck in my other stitching, which is kind of nice that, and then I also left a couple of them. It looks like just kind of open. I don't know if that's the right thing to do or not. They seem to be anchored pretty tight, but you know, Mm -hmm. um, but I have one other tool that I wish I would use when I do things, but I always forget. So I just remembered this. This is a thread winder and it's from Saju. And my, I always have a four millimeter red and white ribbon in like in my stash, like around, because I feel like that's what I use the most of. And I don't have an example of this right here. Well, maybe I do. Yes, I do. Hold on. For some reason, I am pretty orderly. But the one thing in my stitching bag that just gets all over the place is this big clump of ribbon. And then to your point, it turns out to be a big giant mess. So I so hope- I you say that my tool is floss away bags. <laughs> so it could be a floss away bag or if you had like an old like Splendor card or something would work. But what I just, I would love to be able to like have the time to like actually lay these out so that then they don't turn into like a big giant- Master, I wonder if you put that on there though, if you're going to get those creases that we were saying we were trying to avoid. So it's very curvy. It's not as crisp. And so okay. I think if you do, I think, but it's either that or have it be crunched up like it has been in the bottom of this bag. And I just, <laughs> it would be nice to have it like orderly instead of in like a, cause it's one, my point is these are more used for cross stitch because you use really long, um, like it's all one it's not cut. You don't cut them in lengths. So okay. I've never cross stitched. So, um, yeah, but anyway, so this would just be something that I wish I had done to my, and I've been sitting here staring at these, like, why do I never do this? Cause my white ribbon is always one long length and it's always in one big clump in the bottom of my bag. So anyway, we have a couple of those. I kind of forget about them, but very that's, pretty. Well, so, nice. it's nice to have things for a needle point that are just pretty anyways. <laughs> it's true. This is a mother of pearl and the other one is tortoise. So they're, they're pretty, but, um, and I, I, again, in needle point, there's not a lot of reasons to use these unless you really are one of those purists who cuts as you go with some of your over dyed thread, but I'm not very good about doing that either. So it's okay. You do what you have to do it, what you enjoy. If it gets too like ruly, sometimes it's not fun anymore then. It's, it's true. Fun. 
It is very true. Okay. Well, I've shut off all my samples, I think. Do you have anything else for us? I don't. The only other thing I was thinking of as you were talking about ribbons is I was, this is not a ribbon. This is simply polyester ribbon from Michaels, but this never had a bow on it at all. And I just added that. And I think it's, it would be a cute idea to think about like in spots on your canvas where you could just add a little bow somewhere. You wouldn't, it doesn't necessarily have to be painted. You could just Correct. make the decision to do it. So for sure. That's sure i've just really come yeah. to look at them a lot so and i and you heard it here first because she knew to say that pretty I'm soon you're gonna hater, but... are you gonna tell us you like to bead now i too? was just gonna say i'm still a bead hater but not a hater i just don't like it that much oh uh, well it adds a lot to the canvas and i know you still do it from time to time but i do it's worth it I'm, i've got a project on bars right now that i have bead I've got the bead thingy ready to go. So good girl. Good girl. <laughs> Get you out of your box. So <clears throat> there you have it. Our bead episode, excuse me. Geez, now you've got me mixed up. Ribbon episode. Um, we, have, like I said, had a lot of fun. And as you mentioned at the front, at the, at the front, at the beginning of this episode, we do not fancy ourselves experts. If you have any additional information or more um, knowledge to share about any of these processes that we talked about, please do drop those in the, comments, but that um, do that after you subscribe, because we love to have subscribers that helps get the word out to other stitchers and continue to spread the word about the craft. So thanks, sure. Melissa. It's been fun. And um, until next time. Okay. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Yeah.